Hey everybody, how you doing? So, this is a seat and guide machine, and the reason I call it a seat and guide machine is because it's basically used for cylinder heads when we do seat and guide repair. I've got some other videos where we're doing that stuff, but as you can see today, we have a Chevrolet block up on here, and I thought I'd do a quick video on this. This is a 1995 Chevrolet 5.7 liter and it had, it's what they call a TBI engine, throttle body injection. Um, but I've never seen one quite like this before, and you never know what you're going to get from the factory. But uh, these blocks are actually set up for a roller cam. However, the, on this particular block, they didn't finish it at the factory because apparently it was slated for a flat tap, and it did have a flat tap in it. But there's some bosses up here on the block that take the spider assembly in here and they didn't drill it. There's also a provision on the front of the block where they have a plate that goes up here and they, they have the bosses here but you can see they didn't drill those either. So kind of an interesting situation with this block and these are, these are the, the spider assembly bosses and you can see they're not drilled and tapped. So what we're doing today is we're obviously going to drill and tap these because we want to convert this block to a roller cam. This is a customer that has a 95 Chevy three quarter ton truck and the engine's got 285,000 miles on it. So we went ahead, we already vatted the block and bored it 30 over. It was a standard bore and we bored it 30 over. The thing is, before I go any further, I mean it has to be final washed and there's a bunch of other stuff we got to do as we build it. But before I do any of that, before I do the final washing and cleaning, I want to drill and tap all these holes because it doesn't make sense to clean it first or, or final wash it first and then drill and tap with a bunch of chips in it. So this machine work, it's done after the initial vatting. We put this in a vat tank and submerged it in chemical for 24 hours to clean it. It was nasty, let me tell you. It's a lot cleaner now than it was. and so. I'm going to drill these. So for those of you that are interested in this, you know, not everybody might not be interested in this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this up and kind of give you an overview of how we drill and tap these. And obviously we're using the machine because these holes have to be located correctly and they have to be, it has to be square. The block has to be, you know, level. So let's get started. Basically has what they call a crow's foot or an anti-rotation bracket. If you look at these, the, the roller, it's a roller cam, and this is just an old used roller lifter. We're going to put new ones in this block, but the roller lifter has to stay in line with the cam lobe. So they have these machined flats on the lifter, and each one of these, it sits over the lifters right up on top here, and that's what keeps the lifter in line or keeps it from rotating, and of course there'd be another lifter here. Each one of these goes over a set of lifters. But we have to have something to hold these down on top of the lifters. That's where we get our spider assembly. So the lifter is going to go in basically like that. And then, of course, the I don't want to let go of it because there's no cam in it. It's going to fall through. And then this flat basically just goes on top here like so. And what that does is that flat machined area of that lifter kind of goes in between there only not upside down like this but what that does is that keeps these lifters from rotating well these are just sitting on top of here we need to have some mechanism right for holding that down so what we have is we have this guy here this has three bolts that go in it and this is the the, the factory hold down here and you just put these three bolts in and you torque them down and this little tang here holds these on each set of lifters. Well, like I said earlier, the problem is the factory did not drill this block. This is actually the first block I've ever seen from the factory that didn't have those drilled. So uh, let's set them up and get them drilled. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of locate this guy here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna paint these with some dicom or something so we can lay this out.
So I just took a little bit of, of paint. I didn't have any dicum, so I took some paint and I just touched these up with paint. Then what you wanna do is you wanna have the bolt hole that we're drilling leveled or, or centered rather. So we're just gonna take a diameter measurement on this thing. And we've got about um, almost 600 thousandths. So we're just gonna take and cut that in half and we're gonna say 300 thousandths, a little less than that maybe, because we were just shy of 600 thousand. So we got, got um, 285 thousandths, which is about half of what I had. And now I have a way to lay this out. What I do is I just take my scribe and I just make a line this way and, and again, this doesn't have to be perfect. These don't have to be exactly centered. You got some leeway on this plate. It, it has a bit of a, a slot here, so we have some leeway. So we're just gonna lay these out this way, and then we'll center punch it and drill them, and then we'll tap them. It's as simple as that. It's, it's really not rocket science, but you'll see when I get done here, I have actually laid out across there so I have the center point of that I'll do that to all of them and then we're going to take a center punch by the way screw extractors make one of the best center punches there is so I'm going to go right into the middle of those crisscross lines right there with the point of my center punch and I want to put a center punch there okay so there's I'm right in the middle of that those crisscross lines and then we're gonna drill it. So once you get your holes drilled, then it's just a matter of tapping them. And you can see this one here was just a little bit off center, but like I said, with this thing, you got so much leeway here, it doesn't matter. I mean, you got all kinds of leeway and room. I got those almost dead center, and I don't think it's off. I think this boss is just oblong here because when I set this dead center in the middle, these holes are all lining up perfectly. They're right in the center of these, these brackets. So that's, that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Now we'll just set up the tap and we'll go ahead and tap the holes and we'll be in business. And they have bolts that go in here, but I'm going to put studs in here. I went a little deeper because I couldn't get my tap in. I did that off camera. And see, this is an oil gallery here, and I think I punched into the oil gallery a little bit, which is not, it's not really a big deal to do that. As long as the bolt that goes in here is sealed, the oil gallery is not gonna leap or seep oil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a 516 stud in here, and that way I can seal the threads and I don't have to worry about the oil gallery leaking or anything, causing low oil pressure, so. We're just gonna tap these holes. And I didn't I didn't actually go all the way through to the oil gallery, but on one of the holes it felt like it, the drill bit started to punch through it a little bit. And so I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm gonna put studs in here and seal these up. Let's get this junk out of the way. Now when we drill the holes on the front for the cam retaining plate, it's a lot more critical to get those holes located right because that plate being centered is actually what centers the cam gear. Well, it doesn't really center the cam gear, but it, the cam gear flange has to go into the center of the plate. And if that's off a little bit, you're gonna have problems. All right, there you have it. We have just 
made these bosses capable of handling a spider assembly for a roller cam. We're well on our way here. Okay, so as you can see, we've, we've removed one of the fixtures off the machine and we set the block up on its backside. Now, one of the things you got to do to get the block square, the block has these dowel pins in the back of it. And these dowel pins are, uh, they're, they're for the transmission. You got to knock these out so you get the, the, the bottom end of the, the back of the block flush on this table. And so we have this thing perfectly square. And just to establish that, of course, we put a level on it to make sure it's perfectly square. So now the issue is we've got our cam gear, we've got our, our cam retaining plate, but like I said before, we don't have any holes drilled here. So I did a couple of things off camera. One of the things that I did is I put the cam bearings in the block and you can see I've got the, we've got the new camshaft in it. Because what you have to deal with here on this is the cam has to have a little bit of thrust movement. And so the plate is kind of what controls that. Now we have these bosses here that we have to drill, but we don't want to just lay this thing on here and, and, and start drilling those because this kind of needs to be centered here too. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to bolt this gear on. First of all, I want to establish that I have thrust movement. So we're going to take our gear that we're going to be using and we have our, you know, we have our plate down in there and I'm just going to bolt this gear on. So I'm, I'm holding the, the plate down with my, my finger and making sure it stays flush against the block. And I'm just gently picking up on that cam back here. And you can see that indicator, and there we go. We got about five thousandths end play on this thing, which is good, that's, that's perfect. We, that, that's gonna do it for us. So as long as you have play like that, you're good, but you wanna, you ever do anything like this you want to make sure you check that because if you ever put this together and this plate gets tight and bound up in there with no play you are going to be in big trouble so now that we've established that we can go ahead and, and get our plate located kind of where we want it here center punch it and we're gonna drill When you tap cast iron, you don't want to use any type of lubricant on it. It causes the metal to build up on the tap. So we just go in. Now this tap is a what they call a start tap, and I've bottomed out there. Let me show you what a start tap looks like. This is to go into a hole that doesn't have any threads. And that gets us started because this tap has a, a tapered end on it, so it tapers into the hole. Well, in order to get down in there further, we want to finish that off with a flat bottom tap or a bottoming tap. It makes it, gives us a little extra, a few more threads down in that hole. So we'll clear that hole. And then we'll hit her again with a bottoming tap. It's to go all the way down and it'll cut the cut the last little bit of that that hole down at the bottom. So we got threads pretty much all the way to the bottom of the hole. Since it's a blind hole, it doesn't go through to anything. So yeah, see we cut the last few there and it's pretty good. Alright, so now before I drill the other hole 
we're going to bolt the plate on to help us lay it out. And that baby. So we got our one hole here. And we got that centered about right there. I am going to bolt this on just for good measure. That's where it's going to be located. And we're going to center punch that right there. Drill it and we're going to be in business. You got to make sure that your center punch is as accurate as possible here, because we got that that plate is centered to that cam, so we got good clearance there. So we want to get right in the middle of that hole, as close to the middle as we can. That's pretty good. Now we've got a real good reference point for our drill bit. Yeah, that looks really good. And we drill the other side. And just keep in mind, this is not rocket science, but you're interested in this kind of stuff it is kind of cool we are converting a TBI block to a roller cam capable block it has the bosses already but like we said earlier not drilled okay so we want to get right in the center of that with the tip of our drill bit and that's where we are at That looks really good right there. Okay. I don't really want to go any deeper than that because I think there's a water jacket down there, which, I mean, it wouldn't kill it, but. Seal the threads, but I just assume not deal with the water jacket. Okay. All right. Let's get our tap in there. Place in here. See what we look like here. Oh, that's beautiful. That looks really good. I like to start the tap with the drill press. I don't want to run it all the way down with the press, but I like to start it just because it gets it nice and straight. I'm not brave enough to run the tap in there with the drill press. I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Just get us started. And now our tap's nice and straight. And get the tap handle and take over. Get this press out of the way. All right, so there you have it. We have upgraded and updated this thing. And we want to put a couple of bolts in this thing and make sure that that plate is going to bolt on correctly. Now, 
And there you have it. We got our thrust plate. Now obviously these aren't the right bolts for it. I just put bolts in there. It takes a special bolt to go with that plate and I actually don't have those bolts. I'm going to have to get them from uh, my supplier. Another thing that we like to do, what you can do too, is we like to tap these holes with a pipe tap in the front and I'll probably do that. This is what we ended up with and obviously like I said those are not the right bolts but we got the plate located and we're going to have we're gonna, we, we drilled and tapped our holes and we have upgraded this block. So we, we upgraded the, the bosses for the roller cam and drilled and tapped those holes. And we also drilled and tapped the, the bosses for the spider assembly, which were not drilled either. So it's, it's a little bit of an elaborate process. And I mean, I don't recommend you try this with a hand drill because I mean, if you look at this machine, you can see it's, we got some pretty significant equipment here that we're using. So, I mean, obviously, these are going to have... I'm really super coordinated. <laughs>